What's going on guys, Jacob B here with another video, and today I'm gonna update my 2018 Senate predictions. Mine were unrealistic. Trump's approval rating has dropped, but it's still like 45% for the polls I trust. So I guess we're gonna start in the West. Jackie Rosen, popular representative. Dean Heller, pretty unpopular Republican incumbent, but he is the incumbent. He does have the RNC spending for him, but I don't think that's going to be enough when the Republicans have to defend a couple other seats. I just don't see Heller winning re-election. But Arizona, the senator's Jeff Flake, he's retiring, and the Democrats are most likely going to run Kristen Semina. And over Deidre Abood and the Republicans, they have Joe, Joe Arpaio, who he's never lost a primary in Arizona, but he would not win that Senate seat. You got Kelly Ward, who probably wouldn't win that Senate seat, but has a better chance than Joe Arpaio. I mean, she was never pardoned. And then you have the one who I think is most likely to nominate once the Republicans get their sense together, and that is Martha McSally, a combat fighter, very popular, very well liked, and I think she'll she'll be the one that the Republicans nominate and she'll win that seat. So that's I've Arizona red. Next up is Texas. Barely competitive. Ted Cruz is slightly unpopular, but still has a Republican base. Texas, not that competitive. Democrats have other targets, and they have to defend a lot of seats. So I don't really see the Democrats making a big play in challenging Ted Cruz. So I say it's probably going to win it by, like, seven. Next up, we have Rocky Top. This should not be a competitive seat. Somehow, the Democrats were able to re recruit former Governor Phil Bredesen. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's like CNN is calling Tennessee a long shot. Phil Bredesen, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he is serious, but I'm not 100% sure. So... Because he said he wouldn't spend any of his own money. It's a long shot. I don't know if the Democrats will attack that. So I'm going to keep this as a lean Republican. Plus generic Republican is. And one polls beating Bredesen by. Nine points. And a couple other polls. Bredesen is like tied. So yeah. I guess we'll start doing Democratic seats. First is Florida. Bill Nelson's the incumbent. He's been there since 01. And. I think Rick Scott will run. I think Rick Scott will run, but I'm not too sure. And Rick Scott, I've read, has a 10-point lead in polls. So, I think Rick Scott will run. So, that's why I'm saying that's lean Republican. Missouri, two strong candidates. They're definitely not like Todd Aiken. Austin Peterson's more of a libertarian. And then Josh Hawley. Bannon and McConnell have both endorsed Josh Hawley. And then, I mean, the other Republican that ran against Aiken last time in the primary would have had it. But Aiken made that crazy comment that I don't even want to discuss. And these two will not, and they'll be disciplined enough to win back that Senate seat. We'll go into Indiana next. Donnelly's another another accidental senator. I mean, he was there 2012 because Murdoch made a crazy comment in a debate that I do not want to repeat. And... Now that the Republicans are running Luke Messer, very, very composed candidate, will not make that type of comment. 
Mike Pence could go campaign for Joe Donnelly. So, I mean, not for Joe Donnelly, for Luke Messer, and that's why I believe the GOP will win that Senate seat back. Um, Next up, we'll go into Ohio, and I had this as Republican until Josh Mandel was in a divorce with his wife and was forced to drop out of the race. Sherrod Brown being an incumbent and being a decent year for Democrats, he'll hold it. Next up is Joe Manchin. Next up is West Virginia and Joe Manchin. This one is so hard. Because Trump has his highest approval rating here. It's 6337 is what I read today. And I don't know. Manchin's also popular. Trump's made some comments about Manchin. I don't know what West Virginia, how, I mean, who West Virginia voters will be more loyal to. Plus, there's always that fact. That Joe Manchin said that he's not committed to staying a Democrat. So this one's up in the air. I'm going to say they're more loyal to the president. And Joe Manchin. This could possibly go. This is may go Democratic. But could also go Republican. So Republicans in Pennsylvania are running a conservative. I forget his name, but Bob Casey's very popular. And but Trump has endorsed the Republican. It's a mutual candidate. I don't think this is Republicans' top target. I think Pennsylvania is a blue seat. Michigan. I just saw that John James. He's an African American. He think he could do well enough in Detroit for a Republican. But Stabenow is also popular. She won like 60-40 last time in re-election. I mean, I think the GOP will make a play for this. But I'm going to leave it as lean Democrat. That could change, though. Wisconsin Republicans have had... The Baldwin campaign says five million of outside spending. Regular reports have three million of dollars of outside spending. The Baldwin camp Democrats have only had um, have only had six hundred thousand dollars in outside spending, but they say they're ready to defend Tammy. So I would say that's and then Minnesota. It's a special election because Al Franken had to resign because of sexual harassment. And could go. This one's pretty easy to call. I mean, Minnesota, Amy Klobuchar's seat is rated as safe. I feel like the voters will vote down ballot enough to to make Tina Smith's safe, seat relatively safe. Now we got North Dakota. Heidi Heitkamp is a semi-popular incumbent. She's a moderate. She did side with Gorsuch nomination. Has a straight up 50% Trump score. And but Trump is also popular here. He has an over 50% approval rating. I don't know who the Republicans are gonna run, but I say the seat leans towards them because it's a very conservative state, and Trump does have the adv- advantage. As a, no, not Montana, not so much. I mean, Trump is not that popular. John Tester is also pretty popular. I feel like he could get his base out to vote, especially after the Gianforte incident where he body slammed a reporter. Ryan Zinke declined to run and took a job in the Trump cabinet. Republicans are stuck running nobodies. I think they'll try, but I think they'll come up a little bit short, even in Montana. So I have 55 to 45. 
This is Jacob B. And I'm out. Peace.